Today, we're going to be talking about getting started, how to build your product or service. And this boils down to kind of four phases. Phase number one, build the minimum necessary thing to illustrate and validate your idea. Step two is build a minimum viable product. Step three, build a minimum lovable product. And step four, respond to customer feedback and improve your product or service according to the feedback that matters. So let's start with the first one, um, mi minimum necessary to validate uh, product. So what I mean by this is a very important part of creating a company, whether you supply software or whether you supply service, is being sure that what you're building is something that people need. So the product or service is something they actually need. And the way you've designed uh, or proposed to design and build it is going to satisfy their need. And the way you basically do this is, first of all, you can start off with something dirt cheap, uh, such as getting out a piece of paper, and if it's a case of software, sketching a wireframe of what the main screens might look like and say, there you go, does that make sense to you? Could you use that? Um, sitting down with a prospective customer. And if you look at the, the book by Eric Ries, The Lean Startup, this is all about the idea of seeing what your assumptions are. Uh, let's say, in my case, that hospitals on paper will would be more efficient and safer if they were doing things on computer. And then testing those assumptions, um, which is where you go out and you speak to, in our case, hospitals, and ask them, you know, would you value this? Are you worried about the medical errors that are harming your patients? Um, are doctors and nurses frustrated about trying to read handwriting or wait for other people to finish writing in the folder or um, have to rewrite drugs charts in the middle of the night? Um, and the amount that you need to build for this is often very small, um, but it could vary. It could be a simple wireframe sketch. It could be some sort of scale cardboard model of the product that you're giving, or it could be some sort of like storyboard where you illustrate the scenario, a person who has got this particular need and how your service is, slots in and fills that need. And this is all about validation. You don't, you know, get to sell anything just yet. And the idea is to make just enough for you to test out whether that idea is going to fly, whether a product or service of that type would actually sell. Um, and then you move on to the next step, which is your minimum viable product. Now, for this, I'm going to refer to a really important book, which is Jeffrey Moore's Crossing the Chasm. And uh, in Crossing the Chasm, it talks about how there are different types of people, different types of customers. On the one side, there's the, uh, the innovators. These are people who have got such a pressing need or are so frustrated or just love new stuff that they will go for any new product or service that nails their need, even if it's got super rough edges around it. They almost don't care how polished it is. They want their problem solved and they're more than willing to go for something new to solve that problem. Um, then there are the uh, then are the early adopters. Um, now these are people who aren't so forgiving of rough edges, but you know they want their problem solved and they want it solved ASAP. So once something comes up of sufficient quality, to solve it that's not going to cause them to have to um, put up with um, errors or rough edges they will go for it um, and then you have the majority which is where most of the market lurks somewhere in the middle and then at the other end there are the laggards these are people who basically love old things and won't change un unless they're ki dragged kicking and screaming and your minimum viable product gets the innovators. It sells to the innovators. It's the smallest amount that you need to build to get those early customers, those innovators. Um, and this is about discipline. This is about saying, what is the core problem, the core need that I'm trying to solve for my product or service? I'm building just that and that only and getting it as fast as possible in front of customers so that among them will be an, an innovator type, someone who's really keen to go for it, that you make the sale. 
don't waste time, effort, money building any more than the bare minimum necessary to make those that sell to those early customers because they will start giving you a very important feedback, which we'll see comes in on step four. So that's step two, minimum viable product. Then you need to move on to attracting the early adopters, uh, the people who would go for something new as long as new was good enough. And this is where the idea of a minimum lovable product comes in. This is a product that doesn't have great rough corners on it, that, that is, is nice and stable, that does its job and performs well. It is still solving the core problem or the core need and nothing more. It's still, you still need to be tightly focused and disciplined, but a bit of polish has gone onto it. So you've looked at, made sure it's stable, the edges are rounded off. It's something somebody can use or consume and have a bit of joy using or consuming it. That's your minimum lovable product. And notice how, in the case of software, you wouldn't start adding in loads of random extra features that were tangential to the core need there, because that's um, not what you're doing yet. Uh, so that's your minimum level product, product, and that will usually get you access to the early adopters, the people who are those that um, will take something new, but it needs to just have a bit, have a bit of stability and polish on it. Then to be able to sell to the next group of people, the, the majority, there's an early and a late majority, there's this thing called a chasm, which is what Jeffrey Moore's book's all about, and I encourage you to go and read it. And actually, the challenge is less about what is in your product and service um, and more about uh, there being momentum, there being enough sales behind you, enough people using it. It's starting to become a bit of a standard. Um, and that's a different kind of challenge that... that um, I'm not going to go into in detail here. So instead, the fourth phase of building is responding to your customer feedback. Your very early customers, those innovators who started with your minimum viable product, will start giving you feedback pretty much from day one. And it's important to be collecting that. And then as you polish off your product more, and you can use some of that feedback to polish off it more to make a minimum lovable product, although it will probably be quite obvious to you where the rough edges are, um, those early adopters will start giving you feedback. And then you enter into a phase of where do I go next? Where are the next improvements? And that's where your customer feedback really helps. That you will hear all sorts of things. Um, the, you'll find that they'll, you, if your product is really nailing a problem, if it's helping someone solve their problem, you'll get quite enthusiastic submitters of feedback. And some of the feedback is going to be negative and critical, but you, you've got to spin your mind into the eyes of the person submitting it. They desperately want this very valuable product or service that you have built and they are using to be even better. That's what they want. So give it to them. So what you want to do is you want to look at all the feedback that you're getting and see, are there things coming up that are... Uh, something that lots of customers are asking for, or has someone suggested something that you know, based upon your expertise in your sector, that lots of people would, would, would want. Um, so something that is going to benefit a lot of people. Um, so look for, for those bits of feedback. And secondly, look for bits of feedback that also uh, align with your business's core values. So in my case, in the medical software world, um, we were getting feedback along the lines of, um, it would be really great if we could uh, have digital forms that we could design ourselves and fill in where we can drag and drop test results. Now, our core philosophy was digitizing the hospital and making patients safer and, and doctors and nurses' lives easier. Uh, so that fit right in. So look at all your customer feedback and see which types of feedback might benefit more than one customer and of those, which ones align to your core company aim. And they will generally be the good ideas and they will be the things to then next enhance your product or service with. And by doing that, you increase your loyalty, you will probably pick up more customers and you build more momentum. So in summary, when it comes to building your product or service, having already found what you want, to, the idea that you want to build, Minimum necessary thing to get it validated, to get your idea validated so that people can confirm, yeah, yeah, I would totally buy that and I would buy it if it were that shape or if it was that look or if it had that functionality. 
and that can be something simple like a cheap wireframe, cardboard cutout model, a scenario sketched out on a storyboard, whatever. Now at step two, minimum viable product, something that actually solves that need and it can have rough edges as long as it solves the need. That gets to your early adopters. Then your minimum lovable product, the same thing that solves that early need, but this time with, with the corners rounded off, low friction, it just does the job, does it neatly, does it smoothly, no more. That gets you your early adopters. And then start looking at all your feedback and find the feedback that aligns with your core business aims and that's likely to benefit more than one customer. And those are the things that you build into your product or service next. <laughs>